Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin and this is video number seven in my new series, An Introduction to Freediving and Spearfishing California. Now long before you learn how to spear your first fish and long before you take your first scallop, you've got to learn the basics and the best place to learn the basics is in calm, calm waters. So we're going to go to the shallows, we're going to target those calm waters and today we're going to be pursuing easy to get resources like wild bay mussels and native oysters. Let's go. In my last video, I showed you how to set up a dive board. In this video, I want to show you how I set up my dive flag. I used some of this Elmer's multi-purpose spray adhesive to adhere a suction cup to the middle of the front of the board and I bored this out and this acts sort of as an anchor point for my dive flag. You've got to be cautious of the types of adhesives that you do use because some glues will actually melt the materials that, that these body boards are made from. Now the pole that the dive flag is mounted to is just a simple tube and it's friction fit and it's actually pretty snug. I drilled a hole through the plastic tube up top and down below so that I could secure the flag to the pole and the pole to the board. This is very important. Anything you don't want to lose needs to be secure. The entire thing rolls up and slips easily into my goodie bag. Um, it works for me, but if you don't want to hillbilly yours up, maybe a better option for you is to buy something like this. It's prefab. It's got some type of amount. I'm sure you can figure out how to rig it to your board. All right, so what I'm going to show you today is something that I'm considering guiding. I got two double sit on top ocean kayaks and I'm thinking about guiding, paddling in to remote beaches to go dig for steamer clams, beaches that you can only access by boat. I'm also thinking about guiding some paddle in spear fishing, but today is another thing I'm thinking about guiding, which is what I'm going to call snorkel foraging for native oysters. And I say snorkel foraging because we're not going to be diving deep. A lot of this is going to be able to be done from the surface or only a few feet down in the calm waters of the bay. So this is going to be an ideal situation for new divers to learn how to use a snorkel and a mask and the basics of diving. Now remember, I do not just guide on weekends. A lot of times the weekdays themselves have even better tides than the weekends. So if you can get a weekday off, hit me up. I definitely want to take you out. We just landed. I'm going to bring the boat up and I'm going to suit up, hop in the water and see if we can find some native oysters. Going out in the water, walk backwards. So I said that you want to walk backwards. That's because you've got these long blade fins in front of you. If you try to walk forwards, you're just going to look like a duck. So what I do is I kick out, spend some time on the surface, just breathing up. I pre-charge or pre-clear my ears by pinching my nose and breathing into it remove my snorkel, and then I do my duck dive. And even if I'm only diving a few feet down, I'm still going to clear my ears. It's extremely important to equalize, even in shallow waters. Otherwise, you can do permanent damage to your ears. Here you see that there is an abundance of native oysters on the first rock I drop down to. This is what I'm talking about. Now, these native oysters are not particularly big, but what they lack in size, they make up for in abundance and flavor. You can also see that they're nestled down on the same rock in and among a whole bunch of bay mussels. Now legally, we're only allowed to use our hands to harvest mussels or oysters, which means you're going to try a few oysters that you're simply not going to be able to pop off the rock. Now I don't want you to get frustrated. Uh, you know, just try a few. If you can't get them, keep moving, keep trying. And concentrate on all the beautiful things that you're seeing under the water here. There's amazing anemones. And if you look under some of the rocks, you'll even find edible crabs. This is an invasive green crab, and we're going to come back to that later on. Here's some more oysters. If you put a little pressure on there, bam, off they come. Absolutely awesome. This is what we're after today. So before I continue, I just want to say this. Uh, there is a season for oysters. It's the same season that overlaps with uh, steamer clams and mussels and they tend to be safe to consume in the winter months. But the best way to know whether or not that mussels, clams, 
and oysters are actually safe to consume is to call the Biotoxin Information Hotline, which is 800-553-4133, and listen to their automated message that will tell you whether or not there are any species of concern for any particular uh, counties throughout California. Here I am grabbing another oyster and another oyster. Once you get it down, uh, you know, you'll, you'll figure out a system and you'll be able to see from a distance, oh, that oyster's going to pop off easily. Oh, that one's going to be really tough. I may as well just pass it up. So another thing I want you to concentrate on if you come out with me is learning how to clear your mask, clear your snorkel. Um, the, you know, the idea is get acclimated to diving out here in the calm waters. You're not going to be particularly deep, but you're going to learn how to use your equipment and get comfortable. Here's another one of those invasive green crabs, and this is a pretty good size one for that species, so I couldn't help myself. I had to reach down in there and grab it. You can see this guy's got a pointed apron that kind of flapped down at the base of his belly, and that tells you that it's a male. Uh, even if it was a female, because it's an extremely invasive species, I would take it either way, uh, especially this size. So I'm putting the knife right down there at the point of the apron. That goes through its heart and that kills it as humanely and quickly as possible. You can see his pinchers are already limp. And uh, that allows us to give this guy a taste test later on. So I kept dropping down, kept grabbing oyster after oyster. Uh, there is a limit. These are 35 per day. I usually don't take my limit. Not that I can't, but just... I don't know, you don't really need to. And in all honesty, it, I use these oysters as sort of an appetizer. And for my main course, I usually serve mussels. So as you can see, when I'm kicking on the surface, my heels do come just up above the water, but the blade of the fin predominantly stays underwater. That's really important. My legs are actually kind of outstretched too. I'm not bending too much at the knee. You can really see that sort of a sleek inline profile. So in contrast, I see a lot of new divers doing this kind of thing. You can see just how much my knees are bending. Bending at the knee like that is going to create a tremendous amount of drag and you're not going to go anywhere. New divers tend to spend a lot of time with their fins above the water, slapping the water. Your, your fins are doing no good when they're out of the water flapping around in the wind. So keep them underwater. Try to keep your legs streamlined with the, with the rest of your body. And that is going to keep you having less drag and you'll be swimming much more efficiently. Hello again. <laughs> Check out all these muscles. Yeah, so there is just shellfish everywhere. So the, uh, the shallows offer these great opportunities, something for folks who are new to diving, who've never put on a mask and snorkel, or even folks who have, but just want to try something new. You know, there's tons of mussels, there's tons of these native oysters, and there's all kinds of other beautiful things to see. On this particular day, I spent the whole day in like two to eight feet of water, most of the time probably in more like four feet of water, and I've been diving for 27 years and I was still having an absolute blast. It's such a cool experience. The other really cool thing about the backs of these bays is the open coast could be absolutely rocking and rolling, pounding surf, brown water from all the rain and sediment and absolutely dangerous to dive. But the backs of some of these more protected and cleaner bay waters, they offer some really exceptional diving opportunities when you simply can't dive anywhere else. And if you want, we can always go out just a little bit deeper. We can dive down and practice our breath hold. One of the things I recommend is diving down and, and then grabbing a rock and just hanging out on the bottom, kind of relaxing and then changing your focus and looking around at all the cool stuff that's like pretty much right in front of you anemones and, and mussels and oysters and things like that and then moving on from rock to rock i did mention water quality uh, that is an issue and i want to get into that in the next video how rains affect uh, visibility but also pollutants in the water but uh, remember this when you're going after bivalve shellfish and, and really even crustaceans it's really important to avoid places that you know are potentially polluted so for instance, some of our bays in the Bay Area are simply not clean. Some of our bays are quite clean. And sometimes even a portion of an otherwise clean bay could be polluted. And usually that situation occurs if you are trying to dive in a harbor area. So if there's an area where you see like docks and catwalks out around a whole bunch of boats sitting in slips, so like a parking lot for boats, um, that area is going to have a lot more pollution in it because it could have potentially leaking outboard motors and things like that and that petroleum pollution could then work its way into the shellfish so i don't recommend harvesting shellfish in those areas 
I was in SoCal the other day and I saw abundant oysters inside a harbor and I was like, man, that's heartbreaking because they were beautiful size. They look great, but there's no way I'm eating them out of a harbor like that. So there's your warning for a uh, for shellfish quality, try to find good, clean waters. So like I said, there are just abundant mussels out here. And so the way I try to organize this is we go out and we harvest native oysters. And you know, you're allowed 35 a piece, but you know, I, I tend to take maybe a dozen, maybe 20, something like that. It's plenty for a really nice appetizer, absolutely delicious seafood. And you know, with oysters, you, you wanna eat them fresh. And then what I always say is for your main course, just load up on mussels. There's more mussels out there than you'd know what to do with. So we can kind of combine these outings so that we're targeting oysters and mussels. And uh, that way you go home with one heck of a catch. And of course, if you can grab some crabs along the way, well, that's a heck of a feast. already seen it. I can't tilt it or it's all gonna slide off, but we got native oysters here. Native oysters. Diane's with me, but um, she doesn't want to be filmed right now, so I'm respecting her privacy. She's still gonna help me give it a, a taste test. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh. She's giving me the nod of approval. Do you like it? I liked it. It's delicious. Yes, it is. You know, my experience with native oysters is they're not particularly big, at least in California. But uh, when you go to the top-notch restaurants, they usually charge you more for the little ones. Something about that sweetness, I think. Mm. Mm. So I want to start guiding this because um, it's super unique and it's not going to last very long because these are also subject to bivalve quarantine. So they'll be closed when steamer clams and mussels close as well. So end of April, that's going to be the end of it. So I'm only going to be able to take people out for a limited time for this. But these are kind of like an appetizer thing for the main course. It's all about the mussels. I want to make sure I get a little bit of that broth in there too. They're uh, beautiful. A little bit more subtle of a flavor typically than the uh, open coast uh, California mussel. Mm. Mm. For sure, we got to get that garlic bread right down in the broth. It's beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. Always chew softly with wild mussels. You never know. So this one, the beard did not come out of. I've shown um, de-bearding them, but the bottom line is I still only probably pull about half the beards, and I just expect that because they're wild, um, when I serve them, I use the beard as a handhold, eat the muscle off of it, toss the beard, because the beard can have little bits of sand and shell adhered to it and you don't want to be biting into that. This one pot muscle dish is usually what I make for my clients when we're out poke pulling or whatever. I want to try the crab. I'm super curious. Invasive green crab. The meat looks great, but we'll see how it tastes. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Got kind of a yellowish fattiness to it. Whoa! Hmm. 
So here I thought it was going to be more like rock crab and have a bit more of that kind of iodine flavor, which, you know, iodine is really, really good for you. So it's not something that I mind. But this is sweet. I'm going to use the, uh, <clears throat> the end of the leg here to scoop out a little bit of that meat right there. Mmm. What do you think? It's wow. good, right? Yeah. Almost as good as Dungy's. It is almost as good as Dungy's. Like, uh, that, I was not expecting that at all. And, you know, obviously it doesn't have the yield that a Dungeness does, but if we're diving anyway, and we get one that's got a decent sized claw, and it's invasive, I guess we may as well just take it for the claws. Ooh, look at that. That is super good. Still surprisingly good. I, I, Still better than a rock crab. Yeah, I think so too. Still better than a rock crab. And I do like rock crab. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's like, yeah, on a scale of rock crab to dungy, it's like right in the middle. Mmm, that's good. I need to shoot a few more of these oysters. Mm. Alrighty, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned a few things. Please give us a like. Uh, subscribe if you're into this. Leave us a comment. We love hearing back from you. Share the video. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. not all over your face when you hit the shore. My lips are numb. It's cold today. <laughs>